Taiwan is often considered a fruit lover's paradise, and a large variety of fruit and vegetables grows in Taiwan. For this reason, in 1970, experts from the United Nations chose Taiwan to host a massive seed bank and vegetable research center. Its aim is to develop new strains of produce that could ensure food security amid a host of global challenges. Today, the center's work is even more daunting, as flooding, drought, pests and other challenges make the work of farmers even more difficult. However, the center is marching forward and today hosts over 65,000 varieties of seeds. Its work will continue to help ensure food abundance for generations to come. Here's our Sunday special report. This is the eggplant we are all familiar with, and these vegetables of different colors, sizes and shapes are also eggplants. There are varieties here from different countries including Cambodia and Thailand. This is the World Vegetable Center in Tainan, where crops from countries all around the world are planted. The origins of the center date back to 1970. In 1970, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations was searching for agencies around the world that could help ensure food security. At the time, Taiwan was chosen to host a vegetable research and development center. At the end of World War II, countries worldwide were facing a hunger and malnutrition crisis. To increase human production and address human health needs, the FAO, the UN Development Program, the World Bank and other institutions cooperated to establish 15 agricultural research centers around the world. In March 1971, the World Vegetable Center was opened in Tainan through the cooperation of seven countries and the Asian Development Bank. Although Taiwan withdrew from the UN in October of the same year, the work of the center continued on. Back in the 1970s, there were many companies, many foreign companies, who established seed production companies here in Tainan. We exported a large number of seeds every year, which were all produced here in Tainan. Jiayi and Tainan have vast plains and well-developed irrigation systems. They also span both subtropical and tropical climates, and there are many skilled farmers in the two. These advantages made it easy for the World Vegetable Center to take root in Taiwan. In order to discover what types of crops grow best and are highest in nutrition, the center's researchers had to collect a wide variety of seeds. The varieties that we have stored in our gene bank that we collected 30 years ago from the same farmers they may have, especially farmers and indigenous communities that live in marginal areas, areas where it's very hot or where it's very dry or where there are perhaps many hurricanes. In the 1990s, researchers from the center sought to acquire a greater variety of Asian crops, which took them on a blanket search throughout Southeast Asia. Early on, those early researchers would go to those countries, and the local governments would just let them drive right into the fields or into the villages. They would go engage with the local farmers or just go directly into the fields and gather seeds to bring back. They would look at a map and just follow the roads, going wherever they wanted. The first generation of researchers discovered roughly a dozen varieties of eggplant, allowing for the diversity of the vegetables seen in Taiwan today. After years of collecting seeds, the center now has a greater variety of vegetables than almost any other research center worldwide. We have in total 65,000 seed samples. It has passport data, means that we know where the seed comes from. For instance, we have several seed samples from Taiwan, from the east coast, the west coast, the mountains, the lowlands, north, south. 
The typical supermarket has 30 to 40 varieties of vegetables, a minuscule number compared with the 65,000 varieties at the World Vegetable Center. After new seeds are brought to the center, they are first planted once to reproduce them. Then, they are dried before the best samples are selected and packaged. After they are packaged, they are left to hibernate, allowing them to be stored for 20 to 50 years. Kept at a temperature of 5 degrees Celsius, more than 60,000 varieties of seeds are stored here in hibernation. However, for a seed bank, 50 years is considered only short to medium term. To ensure that seeds of every variety are kept for the future of humankind, they must be stored much longer than that. Walking into this storage facility where the temperature is kept at minus 20 degrees Celsius, the cold hits you immediately. However, researchers prefer not to freeze seeds in the seed bag and leave them be. Rather, they aim to put seeds to regular use. So, it might be good to try to focus on fresh market quality. Yeah, it smells really good. High hotness is more preferable. The shape is, I think, it's just too small. There was a problem in India recently. At this experimental hot pepper field, experts from the US, India and Benin taste you? and select peppers that meet their needs. For drying, for the dry powder market segment. And for powder, we need color. You need color to yeah. And my, my confidence is very strong that this is very spicy. The experts judge the peppers based on fragrance and taste. <laughs> the expert from Benin is impressed with the pepper's spiciness. Yes, it's hot enough. To... In Africa, uh, we ground it. With if you bought a fresh one that you ground, and then you put in your soup. In West Africa, especially, we love when the soup is hot. <clears throat> when it's not hot, it's not acceptable. But Researchers actually, take seeds from the seed bank, choosing those with special characteristics, and then cross-pollinate the plants they produce with other plants. Researchers look for the most prolific and highest quality plants. The best examples are marked with paint to identify them as outstanding peppers, which are then kept for market. It's a rigorous screening process that takes into account the preferences of people from different countries. We prefer pressed green and also dry red fruits like this. We'll completely dry it and make it for powder right. and also for uh, house consumption in India. And, uh, we'll go for powder preparation also. But in fresh green, we'll go for a uh, whole, we'll cut the fruit and we'll use it for curry purpose. Aside from crop yield and quality and market preferences, horticulturalists also face two other major challenges in the form of climate change and pests. First of all, we focus on virus because we have very high virus pressure, especially virus coming from uh, effie transmitted virus or white flat transmitted virus. To overcome destruction by pests, disease, drought and flooding, researchers must strengthen crops through selective breeding and cross-pollination. Breeding is basically genetic improvement. It's a way to make something better through using genes. We make hybridizations between two lines to make an offspring. We're looking for resistance to viruses, fungi, bacteria, insect pests. Um, we're looking for tolerance to high temperature, flooding, salinity, drought, and then in quality and different market segments. The vegetables currently on the market, that is, those sold in supermarkets, are grown in large quantities and would not survive extreme weather.
The leaves of bell peppers are too small to cover them, and the parts that are left exposed sometimes burn in direct sunlight. After the surface burns, it appears white, like this white area here. In the end, saprophytic bacteria grows on the affected area. Horticulturalists seek out genes that can make bell peppers resistant to heat and pests to ensure the vegetable will still be around for future generations and not at an exorbitant price. The work of these specialists is important to farmers' livelihood. With climate change is the changing in pest and disease populations. So climate change will make the distribution of a particular pest bigger. So farmers will face challenges that they've never faced before because the weather's changing, becoming more favorable for that pest or disease. So this is what I'm afraid of. How can I breed for the future when the future is unclear? The focus of the center has evolved since it was first conceived in the 1970s. Improving the yield, quality and nutritional value of crops is no longer its only challenge. Fortunately, the seeds in its seed bank encompass a wide variety of genetic material. So how can we still produce sufficient tomato in 2050? Or how can we produce still sufficient uh, traditional vegetables? in 2050, uh, how can we still produce pepper and so on. Uh, for that we need to identify a seed from the gene bank that has the traits and linked to that the genes that are adapted to the climate conditions in 2050. The seed bank is like the base of a pyramid, the base of horticultural research. The bigger the base, the more resources the team has, specifically the greater genetic resources. Seed preservation experts continue to collect seeds and expand the original seed bank, and breeding experts continue to select from them to cultivate vegetables that can be harvested in the future. Tainan is home to the world's largest seed treasure chest, and the work of experts there will ensure the food security of generations to come.